usually I don't actually, that's the, the bottom line, is there are times when I should be writing and I'm teaching or I should be doing something for my students and I'm writing, so it's like every day I'm sort of thinking where can I find that little bit of time to write really, so it's, it's it, from day to day I just sort of divide up my day and try and find a bit of time for writing, so. Um, but what I could really do with is a 36 hour day and a nine day week actually, if you could arrange one of those that'd be good. Oh, well, it's great. I mean, when you're writing a book, you've no idea whether it's going to be good, bad, or indifferent. I mean, obviously, you try and make it the best it can be, and you hope people will like it, but you never really know until it's out there. And even when it's finished, you're the worst judge of your own writing. You know, it's, you can't tell. You're so, all you notice are the things you don't think are quite right, and you remember all the things where it was a struggle, and it, you, you can no longer tell whether it's any good or not. So you sort of depend, in a way, on other people's reactions. So when it gets shortlisted for prizes or, or when it sells well or when it gets foreign translation rights, those are the sort of things that sort of make you feel like, well, actually, that book was probably OK then. You know, you almost need other people's judgment before you can feel that about your own writing. No, I quite like doing all of those things, actually. I get, I get very bored if I do the same thing for too long. I mean, my job here is part-time, so I'm part-time teaching, part-time writing, and I like that mix, really. Uh, and I like... I mean, the last five months I've been writing short stories after finishing um, the novel that's coming out next spring. So it's been really nice to work on short fiction for adults. I'm just finishing my third story and starting a fourth over the last few months. And that's been great, actually. I mean, apart from anything else, when you're writing a short story, you can see the winning post in sight. You know, you're, you're not beginning some project that might still be there 18 months later. So I like that. And it's a nice variation. And by the time I get to the other side of Easter and I'm ready to start writing the next teen novel, I'll be back into wanting to write a novel again then. So I, I quite like that mix really. I know some writers do the same kind of books for the same kind of readers and make a career out of that and that's great, good luck to them. But for me I, I just like that variety really. A lot of the things I did when I was travelling or experiences I had or places I went to or people I met or things that happened to me or that I witnessed have gradually sort of dripped into my fiction. I've not written a novel about the whole experience, or, but I, I mean I went travelling a couple of times, but, but bits and pieces of those experiences have sort of found their way into fiction. Um, I mean that tends to be how most writers work, you sort of draw on your own personal experiences and it's the degree to which you fictionalise them or present them autobiographically that, that varies from author to author and obviously you mix it in with imagination and research and other stuff as well. But uh, um, so, so yeah, quite a bit of what I, I sort of experienced when I was travelling has, has found its way in. Um, well, I always was interested in writing fiction, even when I was a, a, a young lad. I mean, I was an only child, so I, well, I grew up playing by myself quite a lot of the time and inventing, you know, I'd have toys and soldiers and things, and I'd invent storylines around them. I used to write screenplays. When I was about 10 years old, I used to write these screenplays for these toy soldiers that I had, and, um, sort of cowboys and Indians. You could, you could still play with cowboys and Indians in those days and call them that. So obviously, we don't do that anymore, but in those days, you could. And uh, So I used to write these elaborate stories about these, these toys. So I think I always had that sort of desire to, to write stories or to make narratives up. Um, so I think it's probably from early childhood, really, or as early as I can remember. Um, and I think it might be partly rooted in the fact that being an only child, I spent a lot of time having to use my own imagination as a sort of playmate. Um, but there must be more to it than that, because there are plenty of people who aren't only children who are also creative, so that obviously can't explain it. But um, So I think it started then. And also, English was my only good subject at school. It was the only thing I was any good at, really. Um, it was the only subject I got any good marks for. It was the only subject I enjoyed doing. So I, I think I always knew I wanted to do something for a job or for a career that, that used what I was best at, really. It feels like it. I mean, it's, it's, I wouldn't sort of suggest it's easy to write, even if it's something that you have a facility for. Um, but, I mean, you need to work at it, and there are skills and techniques and things that you develop. But, but I've always enjoyed it so much that it never felt like work, really. So even in the days when it's a bit of a struggle, I mean, you get days when, when you get blocked or you can't work your way through a scene or somehow the, the thing isn't quite hanging together and, uh, um, and you find a way of working through that. But it, it's always felt enjoyable to me. And I think if you enjoy something, it never really feels like it's hard work then, does it? So I think sort of, yes, it comes naturally, and you enjoy working at it even when it's not going very well because it's just what you like doing, really.
Well, I used to. I used to be really precious about having this particular desk in a, in a particular room that was my writing space. And then, um, then we had children, and I got other jobs that sort of meant my time was encroached upon. And when you're writing, so I said earlier at the start of the interview that you, you find pockets of the day when you can do your writing. And sometimes that might be when you're on a train or when you're having a cup of coffee for half an hour between appointments. Or if I'm at my desk in the office here and I've got a class at four and say this interview an hour before that, I might get a half an hour or 45 minutes in between to do some writing. So I, I sort of developed this um, way of writing wherever I happen to have some time. If, if, even if it was only half an hour or 45 minutes, just I'd, I'd take a notebook around with me and write when I got the chance. So now I've, I can pretty much work anywhere. I mean, I, I go once a week, I go into Cafe Nero in Ilkley where I live and just sit in a corner there unless someone else is sitting in my seat. Someone, people sit in my seat, you wouldn't believe it, would you? So they do not realise that that's my, there should be some blue plaque above. This seat is reserved for Martin Bedford. But, uh, and I, I sit there and write. Um, and even, you know what coffee shops are like, the, the milk steam is making a racket, they're grinding the coffee beans. Someone's bunging a load of um, cups into the dishwasher and making a racket. There's usually at least half a dozen parents with toddlers who are throwing toys at each other and screaming in the background. But somehow when I get into the writing zone, all of that just sort of drops away into the background and I can can write. But if you'd asked me maybe five, ten years ago, I would have said, oh, I couldn't possibly work in a coffee shop. I need my, I need my desk and my space. So, so I think I've sort of trained myself to work wherever I can, really. Oh, um, that's a tricky one. Um, to be honest, the, the best piece of, write, of advice I've ever had about writing is just write as much as you can, as often as you can. Um, I went on a writing course. I went on several writing courses before I got published. Um, I did an MA in creative writing at UEA, so it's really interesting to be on the teaching end of one of those now. But, um, um, but I remember a writer on a residential course I did at Bristol Poly, as was then. It's probably now called the University of the West of England or something, but it was Bristol Poly in those days. And uh, he said um, that the, the writing, he compared it to ice skating. He said, you need to just do it as much as you can, as often as you can, and you're going to fall over a few times and you're going to take a while before you're confident and it, it, it comes with, with doing it. And there's no substitute. You can do writing courses and read how-to books um, and all of those, so you can join writing groups and so on, but, uh, but there's no real substitute for just sitting down and writing as much as you can, as often as you can, and that's probably the best advice I've ever been given. And I usually, if anyone asks me to pass on advice to them, that's usually what I, what I start with. Well, I think that the aspiring writers one would be uh, just repeating the advice I was given about writing as much as you can, as often as you can. And I, I wouldn't ever give advice to fellow authors who are already authors, because I think they've got there and done it in their own way, and I should really be pinching advice off of them rather than offering them mine. Um, you do, I mean, yesterday I was down in, um, day before yesterday I was down in Essex. Um, Never Ending's been shortlisted for the Essex Book Awards, and they did an event in a school in Essex where they got about six or seven schools to bring kids in on minibuses to the school for the day, and there was about 130 kids there, and me and another author did a talk and a, a sort of Q&A session, and then we did a couple of workshops, and it was her first novel, um, and it was my um, seventh novel, so there was a, an experience difference there in terms of where we were at on our career paths, but at no point did I ever feel like she wanted or that I should offer any kind of advice to her, you know. I mean, she was, she was quite nervous about doing the whole talk in front of a room full of 130 teenagers because she'd just written a, her first teenage novel and it's barely been out two months and there she is standing in front of a hall full of 130, 14-year-olds all staring at you as if you're some kind of a lunatic, you know. So I think she found that quite nervous, but there was no way I was going to give her any tips or advice, really. I think you'd, you'd sort of find out your own way through that. Um, I mean, if she'd asked, but... But there's no way I was going to offer that. So, so no, I don't, I don't tend to band the advice around too much. Well, it's called Stepping Into Character, so I won't give away too much in terms of what the content's going to be. But basically the whole um, workshop is geared around characterization as being the sort of building block, the fundamental building block of fiction writing. Um, if you think of any story that you've loved or book that you've loved or film or whatever, it, if you don't get into the characters in some way, then the story isn't going to work. So you can have car chases and gunfights and all sorts of drama. But unless we're engaged with the people it's happening to or who are doing those things, then, then the story doesn't work. So, so it's working on character for me is, is the key to that. So that's what the workshop's going to be looking at. And I'll get people to do a sort of short burst um, note-taking exercise that builds up a sort of an ideas bank, if you like, and then develop that into working into something in a bit more of a sustained piece of writing. So that's, that's without spoiling too much of what's, what's going to be involved, that's, that's pretty much what I'll be doing.